A new report suggests there is a growing ideological divide between young men and women. And the report in the Financial Times found that women aged 18 to 30 are becoming far more liberal, while men in the same age group are developing more conservative views. This report looked at polling across several countries and determined the gap is widening rapidly among young adults and is dramatically more pronounced compared to older age groups. Now, for more on this trend, we're joined live by Alice Evans, a visiting fellow at Stanford University and one of the leading researchers on this topic. Now, Alice, thank you for joining us today. This is fascinating. It seems like a lot of this trend, this divide, dates back to the Me Too movement, but goes far beyond issues of gender. Yes, definitely. It's associated young men in general. They tend to be more across Europe and the US. They tend to be more skeptical of foreigners, more likely to vote for the far right, and also express what we call modern sexism. They feel that advances in women's rights come at men's expense. It's fascinating. And, and as you mentioned, it, it trends over for the women as well. So talk to me about how women are not only fighting for the Me Too movement, women's issues, but also more open to some of the things that you mentioned there. Absolutely. So what we see among young people uh, in their 20s is that young women are becoming much more progressive, much more concerned about racial inequalities, for example, much more concerned about social injustice. Um, but men are not going in the same direction. So for the first time ever, we see this ideological polarization between young women and young men. What would you blame for the divide starting and what's making things worse? Do we point the finger at social media, for example? So I think there are four really excellent academic papers that shed light on what's going on. So there's a wonderful paper by Off, Sharon and Alexander. They look at modern sexism across Europe and they find that young men are more likely to resent women's gains in places where there's been prolonged unemployment and where they also perceive uh, where there's acute job competition and when they also think state institutions are unfair. And there's another very important academic paper on zero-sum mentalities, the belief that your gains come at my expense. And that kind of zero-sum thinking, which holds on both the left and the right, is associated with places and people who have experienced economic immobility. Like if you have economic stagnation, you're more likely to think the pie is very small, and if they're grabbing it, there's less for me. So and then, so those are the, the those are the big economic drivers, and that seems to be encouraging it amongst the youth because it's young people who've seen less economic immobility compared to their parents. Um, and so this is really important. So it's not that all young men are becoming more right wing. It's particularly young men who are perhaps less educated, who are falling behind and seeing women taking their place. Rich, successful men are perfectly fine. You know, rich, successful men are often very liberal and voting for democratic parties because their status is secure. So if men care about status and they're doing well in the labor market, they can still vote left wing. Then a second important factor beyond the economics is social media filter bubbles. So people are spending more time online and they're in these filter bubbles, which are reinforcing their priors, um, giving them, you know, making them feel self-righteous. So rather than saying, you know, hey, you're, you're a bit of a loser if you can't get a date, they're being, people are saying, you know, it's women's fault for being graspy and greedy, for example. And then a th so filter bubbles are really important because if you're, you're trapped in that group think, everyone is telling you you're right and you just take it for granted. So filter bubbles are really important. And corporate algorithms, they want to keep people hooked. And they do that by reinforcing their priors. And a third really important factor is cultural entrepreneurs. People like Andrew Tate, you know, rich, successful guys can, sell, can charismatically sell the story that, you know, it's women, you know, men should dominate women and that's how women should behave. So it's these three really important factors, the economic resentment, the social media filter bubbles, and also that cultural entrepreneurship. Well, this is having widespread side effects. It's impacting a lot of things, not just here in North America, but around the world as well. So walk us through some of those impacts, birth rate, marriage rates, things of that nature. Right, absolutely. So a really fascinating case is South Korea, where it has the largest gender pay gap in the OECD. And for a long time, you know, men have dominated companies and female graduates are treated like servile underlings, expected to serve the tea or run errands. 
And for a long time, women have been abused. And, you know, there are various spy cams, which and men have total impunity for harassment and assault. And for a long time, women have been so silent and ashamed that they haven't done anything about it because it's so humiliating. But now there's a massive feminist movement right in South Korea. Women are becoming much more emboldened and speaking out and they're having none of it. And so what we're seeing is that this is also affecting birth rates, because if women see men as repulsive and don't want to have anything to do with them, then more young women in South Korea, in Hong Kong, in Taiwan, they don't want to marry these guys. And they're choosing to stay single and they don't want to mother. So that's part is not a full explanation of falling fertility, but it's certainly contributing to the big fall in fertility, the big fall in marriage. Well, clearly widespread, hopefully some action on that sooner rather than later. Uh, Alice Evans, a visiting fellow at Stanford University, a lead researcher on this topic. Thank you for joining us, providing your insight. I wish we could talk for longer. Take care. Take care.